So I'm going to show you how um, to create a, a tower really um, using um, the repeater function in Revit 2013. It was just a concept I was trying to come up with with a client the other day and I didn't know whether it would work but actually it works reasonably well. It, it, it would have some limitations but uh, let me just show you how I put this to bit together. Um, so I'm going to start off in the conceptual uh, massing environment. I'm going to draw a reference plane here, a vertical reference plane. And, and I set that on the current work plane so it's going to sit up on the, in the middle there so that means if I select it, it will go up and down, that's kind of fine. Uh, let's just select it again and turn the temporary dimension into a permanent one. We're going to kind of change that anyway, so just leave it like that. Um, and next, all I'm going to do is select the reference line and I'm going to divide path, which is fine. Uh, and by default, it just kind of divides it by six. So with that selected, go to the divide properties over here uh, and we'll go to number uh, and we're going to set the parameter here uh, and I'm going to set this just to be number okay and I'm going to leave it to be um, a type parameter and by default it will automatically be an integer which would kind of make sense and if we OK that if we now go to our family types here we've got that number number parameter so we can play with it and increase the number of points um, up and down that reference line. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to I want like a, a figure that I can tie in and it becomes a little bit clearer later why I do this. Um, so I'm going to add in here another parameter okay and I'm going to make this number and I'm going to call this here number of floor plates and we'll leave that as a type parameter uh, and this allows me to do the same thing drive it okay so what we'll do here is we'll put in there nine okay so we're going to do some cross-linking of parameters here uh, we're going to put the number of um, floor plates here and we're going to make that in that uh, parameter there form part of that formula so if I apply that that means if I drive this here 10 and apply the number of, um, of points will obviously increase okay so that's my first step um, but what we then need to do is we now need to control the overall height um, but we need to do a few more things we'll add another parameter and we'll call that floor to floor and we're going to set our floor to floor to be three meters now the annoying thing with this technique is it allows a consistent um, floor plate so you can't vary the floor plates which is not ideal but you know, it, it's good enough. Uh, we'll add another parameter here and what we'll do is we're going to call this one height. So we're going to need to do some more uh, calculated formulas here in brackets oops we're going to make number uh, minus, oops, minus one uh, and what are we doing here? I want to take one floor plate off because the way that the repeater function works uh, I want to reduce one uh, to get my overall height uh, and then we'll make that multiply by finish floor level. Okay, So that should, if we do this and apply this, should calculate a height value here uh, to be the number of floor plates minus one um, multiply by the floor plate itself which should give us well, in this case uh, 27 meters high if we apply that what I need to do now is select this dimension here and add it to our height parameter it's looking good we can double check things now if we just go to our south elevation what I do want to do is quickly just measure yeah so the floor plates uh, and the floor to floor levels are working Okay pop it back up into 3D and it means here now if we increase the number of floor plates and in this instance here make it like 15 obviously this tower then increases in size okay so that's working for the actual structure of how the tower would work and, and the math behind it uh, what we need to do now is create ourselves um, a little adaptive component which I'll quickly put together uh, and we'll 
basically host it on the points and then we'll repeat it. So come to new and we'll do new family. We will choose what will we will choose? We'll generic model adaptive and we'll set the reference plane and we're going to place a point here. If we select that point and we make it adaptive, that's good, pop it back into 3D. What I'm going to do now is hold on the shift and control keys down, just replicate these reference lines just for speed. Uh, set that work plane there and we'll dimension here and we'll equalize, we'll add a dimension here in a minute for that one. Equalize here. Let's change the uh, level of detail, or oh, the scale here so you can see this. That's better. And um, what we'll do here is we're going to make this a new parameter. I'm going to be super lazy and call this width. And I'll make it an instance parameter and I'll show you why I do that in a second. And um, we'll make this one here depth. I'll make that an instance parameter. Now the key to this is to use, rather than use model lines, is to use reference lines. We'll choose reference lines and rectangle and we'll snap from here to here and lock these reference lines and then what we'll do here is select the, the reference lines and we'll choose create form and rather than the plane we'll obviously choose an extrusion I'm going to select the top of that plane and one of the nice things about this technique when you're using reference uh, lines is you get a positive and negative so we can actually add a parameter here um, so I'm going to go in here and say add a parameter and we'll make this instance and we'll make this h for height. So that's our little adaptive unit. If we then load him into our family here, let's pop it back into 3D. And all I'm going to do is place him on one of those points there. Okay, actually let's undo that again. And what we'll do is place him on the last, the bottom one. Okay. Now the key to this now is to tie um, the parameters um, of this unit into the overall project. So we can select him, and um, with because we used instance parameters, I can now start to tie it um, in this in this massing family. So start to link the parameters together. Probably not explaining myself very well, but. Anyway, I think you'll get the idea when I say select the height parameter here, and obviously we want to link that to floor to floor. Okay. Select him again, but this time we're going to add a new parameter here, and we'll call it unit width. Um, and we'll make it a type, and we'll do the same here, and add one called unit underscore depth. Okay, that. Now we're almost there. So all I need to do now is select my um, adaptive component. If we hit our repeat feature, we get all our um, blocks. Remember what's happening here is, although technically this is not correct, because we've got an additional level. So you just need to be aware of that, because we are getting an additional level based on the repeater. So it's not fixing it between the height, it's effectively what it's doing is fixing it between the height plus one okay so you just got to be aware of that limitation well, maybe it's not a limitation but you I think you'll understand where I'm coming from um, if we go to our family types the nice thing about this is we can start to control the overall width of the unit so let's say that that's 10 meters and apply that and we'll make this say 15 meters and apply and then obviously if we increase the number of floor plates um, say from 15 to say 25 and apply we increase the number of floor plates. Now you could even go further we could come back here to this unit here and if we started to introduce shared parameters we could do calculated formulas that worked out the floor plate area so obviously width uh, multiplied by depth could be a, a formula we included here 
um, and then we could take that again a little bit further and use the f same formula in the family um, of the, the obviously calculating the width uh, multiplied by depth multiplied by levels to get the actual number of um, or the actual area rather of, um, of all the floor plates you're probably kind of wondering why I'm doing this and you're probably saying well wouldn't you kind of do that in the conceptual massing and load it into the conceptual massing and then do floor plate areas well yeah you could do um, but there might be instances where you don't want to cut all the floor plates and the problem with the cutting in when you're using that floor by mass uh, feature is sometimes you want to see the lines um, and you can't see the lines properly so it's just a, it's just really an idea of me just playing around see if you can do it but it's uh, it's it could be useful it could be a useful technique the only annoying thing is I can't start to reduce um, the floor plates as you go in height I'm sure you've seen it from the likes of Phil Reed where he uses uh, sort of old school um, generic uh, models nested where you can obviously use features that change and twist uh, the tower we can't kind of do that but we can obviously just get the floor plate areas which it could be useful okay take care